I made a short video about this a couple of years ago and it's turned out to be quite popular. So this time I'll go into more detail and cover the entire process, including how to rewire the stator and make a custom charge controller. There are many ways to power this homemade generator. You can mount it on a windmill, bicycle, biogas motor, anything that will spin the shaft fast enough. I have a good supply of free water on my property, so I'm going to attach a Pelton wheel to the shaft, divert some of the water through a pipe, and the difference in height between the water intake and the Pelton wheel will create enough water pressure to spin the shaft, generating enough electricity to power my house. This is what you're looking for, a Fisher & Paykel smart drive. It doesn't matter about the size or model number, they're all pretty similar underneath. Tip it over and have a look underneath. You should see something like this. As long as the rotor turns freely and there's no side to side movement in the bearings, it should be okay to use. They're pretty easy to pull apart, just a couple of screws holding the top on. I'll take those out, flip it back, and you'll see a couple of wires there at the back. Just snip those. Unhook everything connected to the metal housing and just pull the tub out of there. All you really need to keep is the tub, the stator, the rotor, shaft and bearings, everything else can go. If you're building a windmill or attaching it to a motor, you might want to cut the bearing assembly out of there, but since I'm using it for water, I'll leave it as it is. The motor will produce electricity with the factory wiring, but it is capable of making 400 volts AC, which is dangerous to work with, and not very useful for most setups. Some people do use it like this, but I don't recommend it. Pull the rotor off the back and have a look for any chips or cracks in the magnets. If they're starting to break up, you might need to look for a new rotor. Check the state of wiring for any signs of corrosion or broken wires. And if you have a multimeter, test the windings for continuity. These small cracks in the plastic are nothing to worry about. Most of them have these. Now you're ready to rewire the stator. I made a detailed video showing how to do this, so have a look on my channel and you'll see it there. Using an old inner tube, cut out a circle around 6 inches in diameter. Cut a hole in the centre and slip it on the shaft. Keep it about a centimetre away from the rear of the tub. Now I'll attach the Pelton wheel to the shaft. You can get these on eBay for under $100. This one's been adapted to slide straight on the spline, but you can just bolt them on using a thread on the shaft. The water jet needs to hit the centre of the Pelton cups, so using a ruler, mark out where the hole for the nozzle will be cut. Use a hole saw to cut out where you made the mark. Now cut a hole in the bottom of the tub to let the water out after it's been through the turbine. Now I'm making a chute out of an old heavy duty piece of plastic and some screws. This will guide the water back into the stream. Using some half inch plywood, mark and cut out a cover for the front of the tub. This will add strength and stop water splashing out. A piece of perspex over the front acts as a service hatch and lets you see what's going on inside. Cut the hole big enough to pull the Pelton wheel out for servicing. Silicon sealant around the edges keeps it all watertight. Have 
It should be a nice tight fit. Push it in around one inch from the edge and screw it in place. Cut out a piece of foam for the seal around the service hatch. Glue it in place with some silicon sealant. Before the silicon sets, I'm going to drill four holes around the edge of the perspex and clamp it down with four stainless steel bolts. using wide washers to overlap the edge of the perspex. Now I'm making a cover to stop rain getting into the electrics. The plastic breaks down quickly in sunlight, so a quick coat of paint will protect it from the sun. The rewired stator, rotor and rectifier can now be bolted in place. The rectifier converts the three-phase AC output of the generator into DC current suitable for charging a battery bank. Follow the link here to see how to make one. Plug the AC leads of the rectifier into the spade terminals on the stator and attach the rotor. Now the holes where the pump used to be need to be filled so I'll just jam a couple of plastic bags in there. And it's done, all ready to start making free power. This is the generator I'm replacing. As you can see it's seen better days. I didn't check the bearings for about 4 months. They wore out, overheated and the whole hub just melted out. I'll reuse the base I made on my last video. Have a look there to see how it's made. It's basically just a cradle to fit the contour of the tub. The water pressure is about 45 psi. At the moment it's making about 21 amps at 29 volts, which is just over 600 watts. If I put a bigger water jet on it, it'll make up to 900 watts, but I don't really need that much power this time of year. The power from the generator runs into a battery bank, through a fuse and into an inverter, where it is boosted from low voltage DC into standard household voltage. The battery bank stores the power, so if I need to run an appliance more than the 600 watts from the generator, the battery bank makes up the deficit so I can run kettle, toaster, microwave and other high load appliances. The charge controller senses when the batteries are fully charged and dumps any excess power. You can buy these custom made for off-grid setups, but they are expensive and have their limitations. I prefer to use a programmable logic controller, they are much cheaper and more flexible. I use this one to dump the excess power into my hot water cylinder and when that is up to temp it switches relays and the power is dumped into a small heater. It also sounds an alarm when the battery voltage is low or high and dumps straight from the battery if the inverter fails. 
I made a short video showing the basics of programming this one, so click on the link here to see it.